Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying National Archaeology Week. I'm going to talk a little bit about what archaeology actually is. But first, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. La Trobe University is on Wurundjeri land. I have worked on many different lands all across Victoria. I'd like to acknowledge their elders, past and present, and of course the fact that this land is unceded. I am Dr. Angeline Lees. I did my bachelor's and master's in the United States, and then I came here to La Trobe to do my P PhD and my master's. I finished the PhD in 2020, and I'm an archaeologist, but I'm also a paleoanthropologist, which means I focus on fossils of early species of human. I'm an early career researcher, and that means I've only been out of my PhD for a few years. And I have worked in Australia, the United States, and South Africa. And I'm the co-director of the Drimlin Research Project, which we will talk about a little bit. Now, before I get started, I just want to say that this presentation will contain images of bones. None of them belong to deceased modern humans. If you do see a depiction of a modern human, that's going to be plastic or a resin cast, nothing real. There might be images of real bones, but those are extinct species. They're not us. Now, often when you ask someone what they think of archaeology, they'll ask, they'll, they'll talk about dinosaurs. The number of times I've been asked my favorite dinosaur, um, I really should have an answer by now. But we do not study dinosaurs. If we hit the dinosaurs, we have dug far, far too deep. So when I was in the United States, I did my bachelor's and my honors, and I worked on Native American archaeology. And that had led, that led me to excavating certain sites, working at certain museums. But actually, I started as, I started with an interest in the classics, you know, Greek and Roman and Egyptian, all of that fun stuff. That was my love from a very early age. But I eventually, um, through my degree, ended up on this site called Pethic, which is a contact period Native American site. So we're on the north coast, this was a living site. You would have had one of these long houses that you can see up in the corner. And what we find now are post holes, storage pits, and things like that. So a big part of archaeology is definitely ending up dirty like this, but it's all part of the fun. I then spent a little bit of time at a museum doing some um, pottery reconstruction and some stone tool refitting, but very quickly found myself working on osteological remains. The purpose of my work was to look at human remains that had been collected in private collections and museums, try to figure out what groups they belonged to so they could be repatriated and reburied based on that group's uh, ceremony and their wishes. So don't forget that bones are always part of archaeology as well. When I moved to Australia, I started doing commercial archaeology, which is a wildly different beast than what I had done in the past. It can include giant machines, it can include walking through paddocks and seeing what you can see, and it can include hand digging pits as well. It covers everything from stone tools to natural heritage like this marker tree. And then when I was in South Africa, or when I go to South Africa, I work on an, a fossil hominin site. And this site has produced fossils of Homo erectus, who is our direct ancestor, and a species called Paranthropus, which is kind of a cousin branch that goes off and does its own thing, but is super fun either way. Every year, well, except for the last couple of years, we run an annual field school where students from all around the world get to come and dig and work with senior researchers that have also come from all around the world. And it's a great fun time to get your hands on the ground, get your hands on some fossils and meet some experts in some fields that you might want to specialize in. So archaeology is a lot of things, is actually the, the conclusion of, of what I'm trying to tell you. It's excavation. Excavation can be everything from what we do at Drimlin, which involves little toothpicks and wooden skewers and paintbrushes down, you know, the side of these heavily calcified rock walls. It can be caving. This is me trying desperately not to fall into a cave below me while I'm looking for fossils. 
or it can be big machinery moving huge tracts of land. We move in a month or two in commercial archaeology what it has taken us, you know, since 1992 to do at Drimelin. So depending on what you're digging and what you're looking for, excavation can mean a dozen different things. Archaeology often means travel, whether that is flying to a different country or on the road to a different site. It gets you out and about. In fact, in the lockdowns, it was fantastic because I wasn't locked in the house. I was going out to different sites and able to dig and be out, outside. So that's definitely, um, that's definitely a big part of archaeology. Um, archaeology is stone tools and other kind of artifacts. These are some stone artifacts from right here in Victoria that I found uh, last year on a commercial site. Um, these are some bone tools that date to about 2 million years ago from South Africa. And then of course, these are the North American tools that I worked on, you know, about 10 years ago now. So this is very, um, it's quite a broad thing, even when you just say, um, artifacts and tools. This is an artifact from another site in South Africa called a Monzi. It's called a hand axe. This was not made by modern humans. This was made by a ancient species of human that is now extinct. Archaeology is also art and ceremony, the kind of artifact that isn't a, a rock that you can pick up or a piece of bone, but instead an expression. So this, this rock art is um, an example of Indigenous Australian art. And you have probably seen these before, scar trees, which were made um, which are the result of making shields or canoes. Um, sometimes they're made to mark territory boundaries, a hundred different things. And this is a sketch of a stone circle, which we know played a big part in indigenous ceremony in this country. And these can vary everything from something that would fit in your lounge room to something that is a kilometer across. So a huge amount of variability there too. Archaeology is osteology. Whether, so osteology is the study of bone and whether you are looking at human bone or animal bone, because remember animals are a huge part of our story. Whether they were your pet dog or an animal that you hunted, that is all part of archaeology because it's all part of human behavior throughout the past. Unfortunately, osteology can also be math. I try to forget this part until I really have to, um, but luckily all the calculations are ready for you and you don't have to do them yourself. Sometimes osteology means picking little bits out of what is a lot of dirt. So you can see this picture is mostly clods of dirt, but you can probably see little tiny bones throughout. And these are actually what we call micro mammals. So little tiny rats, bats, bits, birds, those sorts of things that have all collected over all of the years that these assemblages have been collecting. The next part of osteology is taking the thing out of the ground and making it look like something we recognize. It often starts like this, which looks like a big pile of dirt. And then it takes a whole lot of bits and pieces like a giant 3D jigsaw puzzle. And then finally, you end up with a beautiful finished product. So if you're really good at puzzles, maybe come talk to me about archaeology when you're ready to go to uni. <laughs> the other thing I think people don't realize is that archaeology is a lot of cool tech. So this here is a, the Artec Space Spider Scanner, originally designed for the International Space Station but we co-opt it into, you know, climbing down caves with us and scanning bits of rock and fossil, which can lead to being perched in very precarious locations like you see here. And then that, those scans that you see here can lead to all manner of 3D analysis. This is a reconstruction. So unlike the previous photo where there was all those little bits on the table, this is the digital way to do it. You take all those bits, you scan them, and you can put them together digitally. Um, you often cross over with some of the medical field. This is a micro CT machine, 
which I use quite a lot to look at things like the insides of teeth. If you want to go really detailed, you use the synchrotron, which is, um, you know, a big radioactive imaging thing that hap that only exists in like three places around the world, but we have one here in Australia. And you look can look at these little teeny tiny rings because teeth actually form like trees with little tree rings inside, which are also super cool. You can do things like isotopic analysis and elemental analysis, which is what these maps are. And they can do things like tell you the diet of an individual who lived a million years ago, or whether they lived in one spot their whole life, or if they migrated across the country. You can all figure all of that out through some of this cool technology. And those are all the things that I've personally used. And that's before you get into all the other cool stuff like residue analysis. That's what's happening here. Where you can swipe a stone tool or a piece of pottery and figure out um, what was kept in the pottery, what was cut open with the stone tool. Um, this is paleomagnetism. This is one of the ways we figure out how old things are. And we have a lab for this um, at La Trobe University, which is um, lots of fun. This is soil coring, so you can figure out um, different climate events. You can look at pollen and see how the environment has changed and what, what plants would have been there to support animals and to support humans. Um, you can do radiocarbon dating, which is you know another way to figure out how old something is and can be taken either from charcoal or directly from osteological remains. You can do all these kinds of drone surveys. And we've got a few different types of drones here at La Trobe, um, either just for surveying pictures, or you can do like a LIDAR. And that's how you probably, if you've heard of LIDAR, you've probably heard of it from South America where they're looking all the way through the Amazon. And with LIDAR, you can see things that are hidden in the, hidden in the forests. So archeology span is the study of human history and prehistory through the excavation of sites and analysis of artifacts and other physical remains. That's the te textbook definition. But in reality, archeology span can be anything you want it to be. It's a huge multidisciplinary field that can cover everything from rocks to bones, geology to physics, and all of these things get brought together to make archeology span what it is, which makes it a really, really cool subject.